This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it is Saturday, so that means it's time for another episode of the History of the Banned and Restricted List. In this week's video, we're looking at the year of 1998, which is actually the year I started playing the game. 1998 would be the year that one of Magic's most busted sets ever was printed, Urza's Saga. And most of the video today will focus on cards that pretty immediately had to get banned or restricted in multiple formats from that set. However, there was also one announcement earlier in the year before Urza's Saga came out, and that's what we're going to talk about first. That announcement came in July and it affected Tempest Block Constructed only. We saw last time that Block Constructed formats came into existence in 1997. In Tempest Block Constructed, only cards from Tempest, Stronghold, and Exodus were legal. With this announcement, Cursed Scroll was banned from the format. This card might look kind of silly to us today, at least at first glance. I mean, what are the chances your opponent chooses the named card? How can you rely on a card like this actually doing damage? Well, in the decks that ran this thing, it pretty consistently did do that damage. This was a staple for aggro decks in Tempest Block Constructed, and actually it would be in multiple other formats at the time as well, but it only got banned from Tempest Block Constructed. In these aggro decks, it played a role very similar to what Ramanop Ruins did for red decks just a couple of years ago. It gave you a great source of reach to finish off your opponent. The goal for aggro decks is usually just to completely empty their hand, and that plays right into the strategy of Cursed Scroll. You could use this with one card in hand and know that your opponent or one of their creatures was going to have to take damage. Cursed Scroll being colorless also magnified the problem even more than something like Ramanop Ruins did because at least Ramanop Ruins made you play mountains and deserts and things like that. With Cursed Scroll, you pretty much could play it in any aggro deck you wanted to, and all of them were, making for a pretty uninteresting format. Like Ramanop Ruins, which got banned out of standard, Cursed Scroll got banned so that these aggro decks would have a harder time finishing off opponents. Cursed Scroll was never unbanned and block constructed, but it did go on to continue to see a lot of play in aggro decks and other formats. The next announcement for the banned and restricted list wouldn't come until December. Urza Saga had been released in October of 1998, and within two months, three cards from the new set had to be put on the banned and restricted list. Two of these cards, Tolarian Academy and Windfall, would be banned in Standard Extended and Legacy, and Restricted in Vintage. In other words, they got the most extreme treatment in all formats. This shows you that the power level of these cards was really through the roof, since Wizards decided to deal with them in all the formats that existed at the time. Another card from Urza's Saga, Stroke of Genius, was Restricted in Vintage and banned in Legacy. All three of these cards could be used together to win games, something that is especially embarrassing, since all three of them were printed in the exact same set. Let's start by looking at Talarian Academy, which is a fairly infamous card for being so broken. Despite the fact that Wizards had used the banned and restricted list to hamper decks that could make use of fast mana, they printed this card, which was one of the more absurd fast mana engines ever printed. Sure, it is a land that produces no mana if you have zero artifacts, but obviously enough, you just build a deck with a bunch of artifacts and then the Academy allows for some absurd starts. Just a month after being printed, Talarian Academy was being played in extended decks that sought to chain together cheap artifacts and mana rocks, rip through the entire library with various card draw spells, until they found Mind Over Matter, which allowed you to untap your Academy over and over again. This massive amount of mana would then be used to win the game on the spot. Academy was clearly busted, even outside of a combo deck, and even though the card never had a chance in formats outside of Extended, Wizards pulled the trigger on banning it everywhere, except in Vintage, where it would be restricted. It has remained that way since this announcement way back in 1998. To this day, Talarian Academy sees play as a one-of in lots of artifact-centric Vintage decks, and is still doing really busted things there. The next card on the list was Windfall, which was one of the cards that could allow you to rip through your entire library in a hurry, helping you find more artifacts to power your academy and your mind over matter. I'm really not sure how they thought this card wouldn't be a problem. While it isn't identical, it is similar enough to Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister that you would think they would have been more cautious about it. Both of those cards had been banned and restricted by this point. They made the mistake of printing this, though, and this card really helped combo decks dig deep into their library. 
This was especially true if you could chain multiples together, which wasn't all that hard because, well, you're drawing a bunch of cards. Just like Talarian Academy, it was clear this card would be a problem outside of just being indexed alongside the Academy, and they pulled the trigger on banning and restricting it everywhere, too. Like the Academy, it has remained restricted and banned until this day. Stroke of Genius would be the last card to be banned and restricted in this announcement, and it was a part of the same oppressive combo decks that Talarian Academy and Windfall were in. This is another one where Wizards probably should have seen a problem coming. Remember, Brain Geyser, a card from Magic's early days, had been banned and restricted, and it's a pretty similar card to Stroke of Genius. Brain Geyser was sorcery speed, but actually cheaper. Anyhow, as you probably guessed, Stroke of Genius was the win condition for the Academy deck. It was the place to put all that mana you produced and force your opponent to draw their entire library. In Extended, Stroke of Genius also saw play in High Tide decks, which also sought to produce absurd amounts of mana as quickly as possible, but Wizards thought this was a more fair combo at the time, since Stroke of Genius went untouched in Extended and only the Academy and Windfall were banned there. However, the combo potential of the card was certainly a concern in other formats with access to more mana engines. Unlike Talarian Academy and Windfall, both of which are pretty powerful in a vacuum, Stroke of Genius is only a problem in formats where it is too easy to create a bunch of mana. As a result, it would be unbanned in Legacy and unrestricted in Vintage in 2004, and it has only gone on to very moderate success in those formats since then. That does it for this relatively short Part 7 of the History of the Banned and Restricted list. Several episodes in a row have been able to cover an entire year, because for several years now, things were actually relatively quiet. But 1999 would be anything but that. We have really only just gotten started with all the problems that Urza's block would create. We're only two months into Urza's saga having been released, there are two more Urza's sets to come out, and a lot more time for other cards within Urza's block to be busted. Our next episode, as a result, will only look at the first half of 1999, because there are so many cards to talk about. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future episodes of the series, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.